Hello, this is Hawk Bean, and I'm here with SCP-93, also known as the Red Sea Object. Please like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Item number, SCP-93, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. See Testing Document, SCP-93-81, and for Outline of Contested Conditions. SCP-93 must remain on a, mirror, on a mirror at all times, and under video surveillance. Admittance into the area of SCP-93's containment must be authorized only with proper video recording and subject retrieval procedures in place. Any attempt to use SCP-93 outside of an approved test will be dealt with severely, and up to, up to including termination. Description SCP-93 is a primarily red disc carved from a, spon uh, a stone composite resembling a cinnabar with circular engravings and unknown on symbols. It's carved at at half a centimeter depth around the, the entire object. Deeper cuts are present on SCP-93 with a, a depth of one to one and a half centimeters. SCP-93 is uh, is 7.62 centimeters in diameter and fits comfortably into most palms without abrasion. SV93 will change hue when held by a living individual. The colors taken by SV93 are still being researched to establish a link. Great belief if holds that the changes depend on regrets carried by the, by the holder. If SV93 is removed from a mirror and not held by a person, it will seek out its mirror like surface. SV93 has has been observed to travel in the largest possible circle when rolling, building up with nominal speed. The mechanism of the is ac acceleration is uh, currently unknown. If an obstacle is between SV-93 and the nearest mirror-like surface, it will use its, its momentum to punch through the obstacle and continue on its course at this speed. It will only stop when a mirror-like surface is contacted. Despite tremendous impact of velocities, no good damage will be a dealt to SCP-93 or the mirror. <sighs> Additional notes. No records exist to clarify the nature of SCP-93's discovery or presence at the Foundation. See SCP-93, the OD, original documentation. Since no records exist explaining SCP-93's method of condition, of containment, a test procedure was initial is to establish why it was must be used for containment. The results of SCP-93 T1 lead to the discovery of living beings holding SCP-93 being able to remove through mirrors in a series of tests in SCP-93 T2 to assert in the destination reached through this travel. The original documentation, same item number and officer class. Special containment procedures. SV-93 is kept on a silver line mirror or on a 0.3 by 0.23 meter, 1 foot by 9 inch pestle, at least 1.22 meters, 4 feet off the ground, and in containment cell of log blank. Object is not to be contained in areas exceeding in 3.65 by 3.05 meters, 12 foot by 10 foot, nor plates on mahogany, pine, cherry, or aluminum, and vessels above or below level 1 of containers and cell block blank. Object can be handled safely, albeit gently, without consequences. Tests and consequences are of containment object condition. Conditions can be viewed in section B35-1 of the attached report. Description. Object was found on the shore of the Red Sea, the on January 3rd, 1968, emitting a low sight and dim blue gleam. Its color has since turned into an orange mix of red and on only, emitting a hum of varying volume whilst in the presence of female examiners of ages between 34 and 41. SV-93 is resembled the documentation and for or 5434 at 123 on, on April 26, 1986, particularly when the body of 194 9834 was discovered in research facility blank. Ties between 194 9834 and SV 93 remain inconclusive and effects of prolonged exposure for 
so 93 remain unknown except for infrequent and reports of periods of calmness and in the case of 242-0049 as periodic raves of depression, loss of balance, and thoughts of suicide, these feelings have reportedly not exceeded 11 days in duration. Objects seem to react to the presence of 242-0056 by turning light into violet for no or more than and 2 minutes and 9 seconds, as documented on March 12, 1993. Effects of this re reaction remain unknown. Additional notes. Origins of, of 93 remain unknown, and documents of uh, recovery of 93 have, have since been destroyed into, in a fire in re research facility blank and on December 9th of 1993. I mean, of 1989. Why is it 93 for a year? Anyway. Reports on the feelings of researchers who handled SCP-93 have remained inconsequential since April 19, 1995. <sighs> SCP-93-T1 Containment Test Testing of SCP-93 against conditions set forth for existing containment procedures to access to assess viability of continuing such containment, beginning with the changing in the time of mirror use as position of rest. Mirror surface, brass frame, retail grade mirror, SCP-93 rests without activity when placed in the mirror. This test alone removes the need for or causes silver or wooden containment systems. Sound grade table, SCP-90. It returns upgrade and begins to roll across the table in one direction, making a U-turn and roll it to the other, completing oval shape and repeating this action until a mirror is brought into vicinity at it, at which time SV-93 rolls towards the mirror and lays flat ways against it, sliding towards the center. It is noticed that despite the grainy feel of SV-93, it does not mark the mirror in any way while moving across it. Whew. Two mirrors at either end of a standard grade table. SCP-93 gravitates towards or to close the mirror regardless of orientation and makes a distinction between in types of mirrors, favoring a factory of distance above all else and choosing the mirror to move to. A mirror held by a person moved around. SCP-93 follows the mirror as it moves, gaining speed until a maximum velocity of blank is reached. At any velocity, the impact of SCP-93 against the mirror's surface results in no damage to either object. A person holding SCP-93 while placing it on a mirror. It is it, it was accidental, the result of one of his ass trip epping up some debate about who would be covering launch tab. As a result of the behavior of the researchers, it was discovered that a person and, and holding SCP-93 and placing it against the mirror will in fact move into the mirror. Other than containment testing, this continued after establishing that SCP-93 requires only a mirror to rest in, in there. Testing on human interaction and, and with mirrors while holding SCP-93, authorized by Dr. Blank. SCP-93 ET-2 Mirror test. So, this testing SP93 must clear class 3 buckle heart, must wear a class 3 buckle heart, and is strapped to the chest and attached to the attention pulley system along for 300 meters or 100 feet of movement. Additional spools may be added to extend movement if necessary. The class containing these spools must be high grade and capable of withstanding applied force of 0.2 tons. A field okay containing one of the items should be a standard issue for SCP for testing of SCP-93. One wrist-mounted light source for three hours lifespan. Additional power sources providing up to six additional hours. Four or a half liter of water bottles with water. Four MREs of any type plus two play granola bars. Chocolate chips allowed. One standard issue of a 9mm firearm with 24 rounds of ammunition loaded. This is not to be a issue done so the subject has passed into the mirror using SP-93 HP given an 
and under armed supervision, ensuring that the subject passes through entirely. This item is requisitioned upon for artists upon the subject's return and subject which be made aware of this before leaving the line of sight within SCP-93's mirror. One standard issue field knife. The subject is not to be made aware of this item must find it on their own within the kit. Not his, because not all these subjects are males and not all these subjects are, are female either. Let's not be transphobic. Anyway, the subject must also be attached to a video system with a camera on the subject's head, head or, so or shoulders. This vi video device should be cable based and allow for the same length of travel as the return system. While these cameras have shown mixed results and should only be used in test conditions where SCP-893 is a currently known color. New colors must be tested under or using wired. Must be tested using wired feed. During testing, the color of SCP-93 must be recorded, as well as history of the subject in terms of their incarceration to identify how SCP-93 determines the color to assume. A link appears to be connected to guilt or lack thereof in the subject's psyche. The attached test results should be read in order. Starting with the blue test. This means that if they are using D-Class 4Ds, these are D-Class that have been proven to commit the crimes they are accused of, not D-Class that the SCP Foundation has made up crime to uh, uh, convict them of so they could have more D-Class, which would be a necessity in the SCP universe as not that many people are getting the death penalty. Yeah. It, it, or have been getting death penalty throughout all, all of human history. Oh. Oh, no. That's a new tab sort of uh, link then. Mirror test one. Color blue. Subject is... I'm going to call them... Cameron. Male, 34 years of age, strong physique. Subject's background shows incidents of murder and attempted suicide. Subject is cooperative in all steps of, of testing. Subject entered to provide mirror while holding SCP-93, which emitted a blue color. Outside technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until old palm had completely passed into it, at which time the view changed to an outdoor landscape, heavily tinged in blue. Video feed follows in attached media. Camera activates. Flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same field recorded by technicians. Looks like typical lowland plains. Everything has a heavy blue tinge overlapping the normal colors. No discernible landmarks visible as subject pans view left at the right. Only grass, weeds, and a breeze moving in the taller grass. No trees, no living beings visible. Subject moves forward as instructed, traveling for approximately 500 steps before something becomes visible. A patch of land up ahead is bearing, and grass can be seen dying as subject approaches it. Approximately 300 steps forward, subject is before a hole in the ground. The hole has been dug using unknown tools of primitive origin. Holy system engaged and, is, and the camera offers a light shutter. So it is instructed to enter the hole and after mild protesting agrees to do so. There is no apparent method of descent such as ladder rope. So it relies entirely on, on his own hands and the pulley system to slow the descent. Approximately 100 meters of table is used before a bottom is reached. Light source provided and field at activate 15 meters down when outside sources become unreliable. So we just was up the light, revealed nothing more than dirt, even at the bottom of the hole. So moves forward with assistance of light source. Ask about the blue tinge. Subject expresses confused and then says there is no such tinge from his perspective and never was. Light is visible down a passage and, and 150 meters has been used. Out of the camera's eye, a sound is recorded of the firearm being prepared. The question about these actions, subject says, Justified recussion and moves forward. 
The tunnel turns from dirt, fair dirt to concrete enclosure, slipping from flights of a stench. The light source is revealed to be ceiling in fixtures, a series of which, with less than a quarter, are broken while the others are function. A series of six doors, three to a side, span before the camera view, with a seventh door visible at the end of the corridor that has been blocked by what looks like generic metal, metal or shelving debris. The free show signs of resting a sip goal of retail of store and all units, suggesting other human presences. So he recrosses to try doors in whatever or order he chooses. So tries first door on the right, door is locked, does not open. Second door or tries to open but does not, not budge. Unlocked but blocked. Closing second door subject third door is tried. Same end result as first. Going up the other side at the door, it does open fully and light at his bright in the room. Horrible light switched off at this time, as Soldier pans camera to inspect the room. Room is bare, no contents, but walls are filthy. Soldier states material on walls isn't dirt, but he can't identify it. It's resemble melted plastic, but is brown in color rather than black. Door is closed. Second door or on left side has no handle, does not move when pushed. The hole where the handle was is plugged by unknown material. All doors are shaped in such a way that nothing can invisibly escape from the site. Heights and space for movement is too thin to look through, even at ground and level. First door on the left is on is locked. The power of key is pressing and locked from stem um, to the ridges. The back has been broken off. With effort, it manipulates key to open the door and immediately begins coughing, complaining of a stench. Walls of room are clean as is, is floor. Ceiling is cut in some strange brown material, in the same in strange brown material as the third room. In this room, there is a makeshift cot made from aged blankets with a pillow, a wooden crate containing open boxes of what appears to have been foodstuffs. Language appears on video as quickles. However, some say they simply read cereal. A second crate in the room contains what appear to be empty water bottles that have dried out. A book lays next to the cot. Close, no title or identifying marks. On the wall is what appears to be clipped articles, but language cannot be read. So we have asked to remove clippings for retrieval. Articles but one crumble at the touch due to age. The intact article is put in a filled sample container as it's the most recent compared to the others. As we investigate the book, subject begins to move towards it. Audio on the tape goes strange, and a high-pitched Greek eating noise like grinding metal dominates all communications for 3.5 seconds. Subject has not touched the book still, and when the noise stops, subject asks Control to repeat it, it, it request. Control made no request during that tone as headsets were removed. So it advised to leave room and notes that the door had begun and closing slowly on its own. And if left in alone will close. So it advised to leave if door alone and to investigate door on the right. Girl review of the following statistics of shape shows that as camera pans, a figure is visual at the end of the tunnel where the seventh door is. The door is, is open only enough for a face to be seen through a crack. This is where the door silently closes. No details can be seen. Subject investigates the second door on the right with no mention of anything being seen out of the ordinary. The door when pushed again and smooth and after repeated bashing moves enough to view inside at an angle. A cork board is visible with more articles attached to it. The top of the of a box of cereal can be seen in on the floor and what appears to be a hand laying and palm up. Bob closes the door and hands camera past door or seven which remains closed, seeing nowhere else to explore seven re requests to return. Bob has no O of protest and complaints of ever increasing stench. As Bob returns back down on tunnel, his camera feed does not change or slow or, or show anomaly, but control reports a sudden surge in cable movement pulling an additional five one hundred meters of cable before going slack and then tightening. Real feed shows subject ascending in tunnel slowly while control attempts to verify integrity of the pulley system. So it requests to stop ascent but states he is not climbing, the rope is pulling him up. He exits in on both sides, so it is informed to 
of ready a firearm. Upon reaching top of hold, nothing is visible. On camera, and Silver reports nothing has changed in landscape. Then we got into a return trip following the path of the cable. Driving for approximately 900 steps, Silver asks how much cable he has used. Shortman say are unsure due to combinations, but Silver traveled in a straight line to be trolled, so it should be a straight line back. Silver becomes concerned when he straights that more cable is visible now, moving at a 9 degree angle from a point in the ground. Subject pans camera around full circle slowly. On film, behind subject, a crowd of 37 casual figures stand silently. Features are un unidentifiable, and they are lacking the blue tinge that, dominate the, that dominates the landscape. Black Anna breaks in control again, but subject notes only the audience being the cable having an angled path. Subject exits the end of the cable. It is taut and does not move. Subject control begins to reel the pulley system and slack. Rapidly winds. Watching the angle of the cable movement can be seen as grass is disturbed further down the angle portion from the reeling end, then the line vibrates as it meets resistance and emits a twang when recoil. So his camera pans back along the cable, which now appears to be slowly allowing more slack before all slack is returned and fully system be begins again. Control request subject act returned from. I'm following in cable path and screams a call on the audio with panic from subject. Five shots fired at subject and she saw something not visible on camera. Control reports being able to see subject returning toward point of original camera shows wire disappearing into a point flowing in the air. As subject passes through this point, all cable is now fully suspended in camera film. Almost only the floors. Control reports that the mirror took approximately five seconds to return to reflection and SV93 remained blue in color until one hour after being recovered from the subject. A vast filling fluid was present on the subject's clothes and around his hands where a firearm was recovered. The fluid dried quickly and was deemed insignificant of study due of study due to lack of quality sample. Control personnel monitoring the mirror state, having seen a massive human and being crawling on the ground, easily fifty times the size of a normal person with no facial features. And a very short arm reach pulling itself towards the mirror before it returned to a reflection. Due to proximity, fine details could not be made out, but at least one observer know the being appeared to have been shot from the, the marks in the other right smooth featureless face. Field tests as recovered on um, subject a continuing newspaper article that reads Data Expunge was filled as item data expunged. Now, the green test. We're opening this in a new tab so that I can easily return to this. These are very long um, logs. I hope you're prepared for the length of these logs. Mirror test to color green. Subject is I'm gonna call her Stephanie, female, twenty three years of age. Average for seek. Subject background shows instances of Grand Theft Auto and second degree murder of two children during escape with vehicle. 
Subjects co cooperative have been all steps of testing. Subject entered the provided mirror while holding SV93, which emitted a green color. Outside technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subjects had completely passed into it, at which time the view changed to a farming landscape, heavily tinged in green. Similar to the first test, view feed follows in the attached media. Camera activates, flicker. Here's the view, so those look, uh, looking at over the same form on report by technicians. All greens through the video feed are deeper and green in tinge overlays the normal colors of objects similar to the blue tinge in test 1. No landmarks from test 1 are discernible as subject pans camera over area. This one didn't have any landmarks either. Hmm. <clears throat> Present is a field long abandoned, in the middle of which stands the remains of a scarecrow of unknown design. Fragments left are rotted and torn. Nothing grows on the native till old land. A farmhouse is visible to the array of the field, large two stories, a basement, sheltered, or entrance. This is what one end. Sutter prepares her sidearm immediately and is asked by control to relax before proceeding. Her, her, her heavy breathing dominating the audio feed. Sutter takes a few minutes and announces that she's fine, then proceeds as directed to walk to the perimeter of the farmhouse. She runs bicycles, too, a boy and a girl, as she assumes, I'm guessing, lay against the house near the outer doors. One of the doors to the shelter lay in the grass, torn from the entrance as evidenced by splintering wood. On the stairs lay clothes arranged in a descending order, shoes and shirt going down them. Belonging to a child. Sutter so begins screaming at Control, asking if this is some sort of sick joke. Control assures her they have never seen this environment either, and to please calm down. Sutter so takes several minutes in to regain in herself or continuing. It is unknown if SCP-93 is linking to subjects past with her landscape. After several min in minutes, subject agrees to continue. Communications of subject is muted, and conversation of control making commentary about subject's jittery attitude make up audio for one and a half minutes. Communication restored as subject reaches bottom of stairs. The cellar of the farmhouse is unremarkable and typical. Several wooden shelves line the firewall, all containing unidentified canned substances. Broken light fixtures sway gently from support beams. Cameras pan across the basement slowly. No evidence of footprints are visible, and the basement can be assumed to have been abandoned for some time. Cellar begins to comment about a stench. As subject pans the area, a metal or hatch is visible on the ground, similar to a bulkhead on a submarine with a turn handle. So, uh, subject remarks that the smell is at its worst around the hatch, and the dirt around the hatch is known as being clumped and clay-like. The handle of the hatch is old and, and paint chipped. Sub so covers into turning the handle, which, when fully turned, opens the hatch. So begins coughing at the release of assumed old still all air. When the camera is tilted to view down the hatch, it is uh, a white concrete tunnel similar to the one found in the blue experiment, but in much better condition. Subject is asked to descend and lighter and close hatch behind her. After some convincing, subject agrees to the descent but does not close the hatch. Overlook concerns about severing the pulley. Return system even doing so are acknowledged. Descent down the ladder and trip to the farmhouse has consumed approximately 53 meters of cable when bottom is reached. The inside of the hatch appears to be a, bunko, a bunker ill suited to long term usage. It is spacious, about half the size of the actual cellar itself, containing three bunks and one and for a couple and two for single use. Making a lot of assumptions here. Several boxes of food, similar to those found during blue, marked as cereal, fill a waste container near the hatch bottom. On the beds are two skeletons, 
on the floor is a third, lying next to which is a simple six-shooter revolver containing no ammunition. Three spent and cases are on are across the floor near a gun. The other side of the skeleton is a bound book in, in good condition. This is re retrieved and placed into a filled kit a container upon request. The gun is left alone for request from control. Subject examines one more of the bunker, focusing on a desk where a newspaper has been cut and is in con good condition. And clipped articles are recovered using a filled kit its container. Little else of interest is to be brought back. Uh, if we back, back is in the bunker as the camera panned around. Trash bags, excuse any clothing, a few children's toys resembling poplars or 1950 era, era products are lined against the wall. Soldiers recover is requested to leave the bunker and is sharply asked to wait by a control technician who directs the camera out of view in an area near the exiting doorway to the hatch. Closer inspection as Sergeant moves and finds and so a small area has been pitted with what appears to be an Ethernet jack, the car of which has been enforced slightly away from the wall by a strange amber like substance. Sergeant so refuses to touch it or collect a sample, comes in and thinks so add that if they want on it, they could come get it themselves. Control declines and so leaves bunker. As a group slider to leave the camera, of hands ends up for a moment and at the top of the tunnel a humanoid figure is seen peering down. Control asks subjects to confirm figure. Subject says nothing is up there and begins to climb. Figure draws out of a review after first drawing is touched by subject, who ascends without incident. At the top of the e tunnel, no other life is seen. Nothing has been disturbed. Subject so insists nothing was there and closes the hatch, then immediately vomits. Subject so coughs and uses a supplied water bottle to gargle and, and freezes and asks if Control is hearing that. Control reports no audio. Subject so approaches Subject so hatch constantly with a firearm draw on a lifter head just in not of so camera can view outside at the area. At this distance, uh, approximately 7 meters from the farm, two massive humanoid beads are cro all across the landscape. The entities do not know the subject who remains quiet, but who's drawn on sidearm is visibly trembling. Subject requested to remain still and silent as the beings move. They are featureless, facing at an angle, moving across a field but a vision so the faces are only visible for a few moments. During this time, it is clear that they have no all facial features. The arms they use to drag themselves are short or at times and long at others, stretching out to varying lengths each time they move. There is no rear area to the beings. All bodily design appears is to end at a torso. The two creatures take approximately 10 minutes to disappear into the distance. Before the soldier begins to panic, and begs to return. Request to deny. Declined. Subject instructed to enter the home of the, of the seller and not to leave the home under any circumstances. The first floor is entered through a hatch in the ceiling in or floor that opens with rusty creaks. That caused subject to pause for 37 seconds before continuing upward and entering a kitchen. A heavy layer of dust coats all items in the kitchen. The refrigerator is left open. All food is spoiled. Adjacent to the kitchen and is a living area that subject enters slowly. There is a recliner, a couch, and a television, all of 1950s style of design. The recliner is a laptop whose case also resembles 1950s decor and is coated in heavy desks. Opening the laptop reveals the last moment of its operating system, Faithful OS, leaving a standby mode and immediately shutting off. Laptop has no external power source and will not power back on. When asked to recover a laptop, it brings the cushion of the recliner with it. The two stuck together. Subject advised to leave laptop where it is. The inside door leaving the home um, is nailed shut. 
with thick wood planks. No attempt made to interact with the secure view who pans to a staircase league of stairs. Subject, it sends the stairs without being asked, and the stairs remain silent into control. Well, surprise, when the reaches top of stairs, a hallway with two doors is viewed, and one on each side. And at the end of the hallway is a, is a dumbwaiter. A dumbwaiter is inlaid into the wall. I don't know what that is. So it opens door on the left on her own, which opens to a master bedroom. The bed is neatly made, but the wardrobe next to it is thrown open and closed right around the floor. So it finds laid out, out on the bed several pieces of jewelry and is formed to leave them. So it begins to protest and comments they stink and leaves them alone, promptly leaving a room. So it asks to open the second door. The second door opens and gives a view of a shared child, Aldrin's bedroom, obviously boy and girl. Not obviously, just assumed boy and girl, given the types of toys and clothes scattered on the floor. That doesn't mean that they were a boy and a girl, that just means they like those toys, but okay, let's keep with the transphobia to my room. There's also a window which Sebzeg approaches and wipes with a turn, with the current to clear dust. So I requested to move camera to window and does so. The farmland is visible, approximately 40 kilometers from it at best guess a city. As the camera starts to draw back, it pans down and films the area around the house. Approximately 300 figures, similar to those from the footage captured during flu tests, are visible around the home. All staring up. Uh, Someone asks to confirm figures but says nothing is there, so a uh, request to return and quickly agrees. The egress from the house is uneventful. Police system shows no erotic behavior, as suspect. Returns to point of all your is, is origin. A subject return and a loud groaning noise causes the picture to reverberate. The dishes at control report they, they were also able to hear the noise and experience the vibration. So it returns to report of origin without investigation and re and returns to reflective surface. Subject SCP-93 Relinquish. Video ends. Return newspaper or fragments filed as blank. Next S is classified as the Violet Test. This is three. There's five. I don't know why there's five. <sighs> I feel like three is enough. Beer Test three. Color Violet. Subject is Mark. Male. Twenty one. On years of age. Average physique. Mark's background shows instances of secondary murder of a police officer during a drug bust. Normally this crime, while severe, would not qualify for a sentence that would end, end up with us. However, you need more or, or test subjects. I mean, but the a murder of the officer was especially brutal and excessive. If violence was used. Either way, they are going to ooh, convict you of being like a serial killer, even if there is no evidence, to make sure you will become D class if you are selected to be D class. That's just a rule. Let's continue. The subject was uncooperative and had to be reminded that his cooperation would only benefit him. Subject entered to provide a mirror while holding SCP-93, which emitted a violet color. The outside technicians it observed that the mirror uh, uh, retained a true reflection until subject had completely flats into it, at which time the view changed into a cityscape, urban, lightly tinged in purple, similar to the first test. Video of feedfall allows in attached media. Camera of flickers to life and fans around the area. Subject is in what appears to be a modern downtown district similar to a city like New York. The streets are mostly bare except for a few cars of unknown make or model. These cars look highly advanced and streamlined, 
Subject attempts to look into uh, the car. Our windows without being instructed, it but backs away, remarking there is a, a rank uh, stank coming from the areas around most of them. Subject is persuaded to move closer to one car and does so with coughing, wiping off a window that is covered in dirt. The inside of the car appears to be completely filled with a strange brown matter. There is nothing at all, all visible other than the brown matter. Two other cars produce the same re results, however, a fourth vehicle seems more recent than the others, and the insides are immaculate. The doors to the vi uh, this vehicle are also unlocked, and so it quickly gets in and shuts the doors. Subject is chastised for this behavior by Control, who reminds him that his lifeline is nothing more than a cable, which is sorry enough that closing the door or car doors does not enter it, but they cannot recover a person in motion. Subject argues with Control all over this issue and has a camera across the dashboard, pointing out he couldn't drive away even if he tried. The dashboard is void of any recognizable controls, no ignition, no steering, and several small blank screens that are authorized to be a GPS system. Subject remains in, in the car while Control discusses how to proceed since the city landscape is far larger than the previous test destinations. Control debates this issue while subject stares around the cityscape from the car. During one pan, and a face is clearly seen in staring into the car, eyes watching the subject. However, this was not noticed until post-test footage review. Subject made no comment regarding this entity at any point. Control shortly after informs him to remain where he is, and it escort team is dispatched to the mirror to join him. <sighs> a team of four armed personnel is sent through the uh, mirror and proceeds to the subject's location. Subject is then instructed to remove his harness, which is recovered. The subject's video feed is, and ends and is replaced by a wireless unit used by an escort team. The video quality on this unit is subject to more interference, but in order to mark, mark the mirror or exit, a receiver system is placed through the mirror. Subject leaves the car and now travels with the escort team, giving the morale of possible well, instruction uh, of possible options they are instructed to simply move to the closest building and attempt to enter it. The building has etched glut, a story bearing the name XEA, Research Partners Incorporated, and the doors are ajar. A magnetic lock system is present but has lost power. A team enters the building and main lobby. This area resembles a stereotypical corporate lobby. This is a C shape. There is a C shaped reception in this desk with a chair pushed far from um, it as if, if it was left in a hurry. A PC terminal at the desk as well. Team approaches the desk and the camera bearer is instructed to examine the PC. The unit does appear to have power and Faithful OS appears on the screen requesting a login and password. The keyboard is present, but is remarkably slim and touch sensitive keys rather than press down keys. After one failed attempt, the lock screen replies that maximum attempts have been exceeded and the PC turns off. No actual tower or power button can be located, so the team moves forward. Behind the receptionist's desk are two elevator doors, one to the left and one to the right, with simple old touch sets keys. The elevator on the left is broken. And the door open and then the shaft empty. The elevator on the right appears functional and has power. Without a clear destination, the team is instructed to proceed to the highest floor to get a lay of the city. All floors appear to be accessible with the highest being a 114 and in reality 112 as 113 as 13 and 113 are missing from the keypad. 
Journey up the elevator is uneventful. During this time, the elevator does appear to take longer as it passes by 13 than 113. So that's saying that entire floor was built and nothing put on it. At 114, the door is open and team enters a large, large lounge type area. There are many couches with dust on them. A wide screen, apparently LCD TV, of approximately 60 plus inches in size, dominates the wall in front of them with no power. A series of windows are open, allowing in sunlight at the far end that through which the team proceeds and angles the camera outside. The view of the city is astonishing. The buildings is one of the tallest visible, but clearly not alone in its stature. The city below is gray and silent, no evidence of life at this altitude. Some buildings in the city have a strange ground growth that appears to have been splashed against them. As the vegetalitinous mass was flung and then seeped down from before hardening. Other buildings have floors where the glass has been shattered and the same brown substance is seeping out the edges. One member of the team calls the camera a barrier to the windows on the other side. From the other side of the building, the city edges can be seen. Attention is pointed toward an expressway that encircles the city, upon which crawls was another of the large half-body humanoids, dragon itself up with its elastic arms as witnessed in previous tests. It travels the highway, then moves out of sight. The team returns to the elevator and notes that a button has already been activated for floor 74. No one has approached the elevator, so the team agrees to travel to this floor. On the 74th floor, the doors open and reveal a waiting area to what appears to be a doctor's office. At the reception desk, there is a sign-in sheet with a series of names and dates. The dates on the, the sign sheet all carry the year 1953. A PC at the reception area is on and functioning at a user desktop. The background for the CC is a large set of praying hands with the word Faithful OS under them. On the desktop are a series of folders with years on them contain files that when clicked using the sensor of the mouse open to a word viewer. All files appear to be appointment information. On the desk is an opad tile from the desk of Dr. Arbor Iski, the less verificationist. The door to the doctor's area is sketched with the same name in the title as well as the crucifix. Opening this door leads to a white dust-free hallway that has two examination rooms and a key code door at the end. The examination rooms are unremarkable and typical of any doctor's office. All medicine cabinets are empty. A small amount of sea floor is placed at the it locked to the eco eco door at the request of control and in blunt forcing in the door or open. The area that it opens into is much larger than the reception area and seems to contain a series of large containing capsules. There are a total of six of these cap of these capsules. Two are broken and a brownish amber material coats the floor coming from them. One is empty. The last three have nude humans falling in them with ruby masks. Attached to the front of these tubes are medical charts showing vital signs and conditions. For some times, he tries to explain in somewhat awkward English elements that seem more like flaws of personality or character, or just incidents that have occurred with the patient. Control asks for a zoom of one of the patients in pages on the chart. At focusing, it reads, Citizen Jennifer McZerka did a, it suffer a lapse of the heart that did lead to her to lay with her neighbor twice upon nights of her husband's departure from their home. Patient did submit herself to into the Lord or it's, or it's in our hands for cleansing of mind and body. Very administered by five father Uwalakin, and a patient submitted to a three day period in the Lord's tears to cleanse her system, then release in good spirits. Hmm. If I remember correctly from the story, I know of this SCP relating to another SCP, which is a sentient snail with the memories of a person. The Lord's Tears actually create those half humanoid things. The topmost page, the topmost page reads: Citizen and Alberis Farafon struck out at at her eye father during a sermon, blaspheming that the High Lord. The Lord's tears did, it turned his 
his star to be upright and and heart thusly laying flame for her naughty activities at the feet of the High Father and his blessing. With no proof of these blasphemies, the forgiving judge and the punishing judge they agree that Albertus Erfan should bathe in the Lord's tears himself for a week to be cleansed of mind and soul, thus to prove his eyes ways are fault of not the Father's hands, and to give him peace of self. So the priests Yeah, normal stuff for it. That's pretty much a, a, the entire priest joke. Subject who has been traveling quietly with the expert team now begins to panic. The camera pans focus on him and he is surrounded by entities similar to those in the uh, first two tests. Each team reports uh, in that the subject is having a panic attack, but control requests him to stand still and wait. Subject screams at the entities, which are denied to exist by team commander, saying that it's alone in the corner. Control requests that one teammate member be dispatched to approach and recover the subject. The escort team member approaches the subject as order. On a video, the figure is part to make a pathway for the approaching member who left subject uh, to his feet and brings him out of court honor. Figures on videos are seen then are then seen closing right thanks to close the path. Subject is limited to his feet by an arm and is to the figures that close the ranks when the subject is moved. They remain steadfastly staring at the subject no matter where he moves to. Control requests the team to return now. Team turns to leave before relieving a team member or mentioning something that no, is at the reception desk. A binder labeled the, control, the Lord's Tears. Control requests binder to be returned as well, and it is sold to subjects field kit. <sighs> The team returns to the elevator and returns to the ground floor. Upon leaving the building, Soda points down the street toward the direction of entry point. The camera pans to a section of Ray's expressway, across which one of the large torsos is crawling slowly. The entity turns its featureless head to look at the es escort team, raises its head to the sky and emits a bellowing sound. Team leader issues the order to move, heading for the spot marked by the wireless radio receiver. The creature under the flash ray extends an arm's arm down that stretches to touch the ground before the camera moves to the port. All team members save one move through entry point. So it moves through entry point and returns to reflective surface. Subject 93 is dropped by SCP-93 is dropped by a subject who panics and tries to fight his way out of the room. Subject is terminated by team leader after he draws a field kit pistol. Team leader requests for all to reopen, but it takes several minutes to find someone who can hold SCP-93 and, and generate a similar color. When magic color is displayed and applied to the mirror, the re video receiver is visible, and all individuals report a horrific smell. Team leader through, moves through the entryway with control person blank. The uniform and possessions of the escort team member who was left behind are present and recovered, but the member himself is nowhere to be seen and does not respond to shouts. Member assumed KIA or killed in action. And while it's receiver recovered, control and escort return to entry point and mirror returns to reflective surface. Later review of the recovered camera shows escort member or blank grasping at the air where entry point should be and then turning back to look at the up at the oversized torso. A brown on gel seems to strip off the creature as it moves it was a discreet shortly after being dislodged as if evaporating. So shots are fired at the creature's face with automatic weapon and carried by blank that lands in the face of the creature, causing a spray of less viscous brown liquid to for to pour from the wounds. Like screams of Sandy's as the face of the creature descends upon him, and camera is pushed to the ground. Camera feed remains dark for approximately 65 seconds before light comes back, and the camera film 
One was the creature crawling back to the expressway, pulling itself onto it, then crawling in the direction it was originally headed. Link, believed to have been absorbed by a creature and perhaps digested. This may have been an example of how these unknown entities feed by direct contact with living material. Where study is recommended it to be to avoid on this issue. Return ledger filed as blank. <sighs> These are really long. Rear test for the yellow tests. Declassed subjects no longer authorized for testing. Testing focus has been shifted to data collection after analyzing the articles right back from the previous three tests to better understand the fate of the world or the access by SV93 and determine if safeguards or practices are required for our own world. Analysis of the brown fluid on the clothing of the last escort team member has been fought out with other recovered articles. Dr. Blank has, uh, has volunteered for this test as out of the possible candidates, he has been able to cause SV-93 to undergo a new color change. There is no evidence of Dr. Blank's background of any illegal or criminal behavior, nor of any psychological problems. When presented to the mirror, the view changed to that of a cubicle office environment. For this test, Dr. Blank opted to use a wireless video system and forego the fully returned system, saying he was confident he would be safe as none of the torso creatures happened with within a building, where the mirror's destination showed. Video feed commences after Dr. Blank has crossed the mirror. As with prior tests, SCP-93, its current color yellow tinges all video material. Camera liquors to life and pans across a series of plain white cubicle constructs. X. Approximately 30 are visible. At the far end from the point of entry is an office module built into the wall with frosted glass as, as well as in a glass door. Dr. Blank approaches the door and investigates the edge writing on it. Senior Manager Stanley email elements. The door is unlocked. Dr. Blank enters the office, examines the desk. The coffee cup, a coffee cup is on the desk, a dark brown stain covering half of the inside as the liquid evaporated. There is then a on a plate with Dr. which Dr. Blank picks up and lobs at, at a wall. On impact, it thumbs like a rock and falls. A file cabinet in the corner of the room draws Dr. Blank's attention and he goes through each shelf one at a time, stopping in the second drawer, taking out a file, then going back to the first and taking out two others. Continuing to the third and fourth drawers, he withdraws four additional files and spreads them um, all on the, on the desk. The files are blue filing for holders, and he points with his finger and the camera at a symbol on each of the praying hands, saying out loud for the camera that all other files are stored in yellow folders. The blue folders are placed in his field kit. Camera attention is turned to the PC on the desk that is logged in and functional. Dr. Blank comments out loud, wondering where his devices are getting the power from, as he has noticed no power outlets. This PC's desktop contains the logo of Faithful OS and even has sound sounds. Clicks on the mouse followed by a soft hymn like hums and opening of icons followed by angelic egg bells. The PC field also yield any useful information to Dr. Blank, who abandons it and leaves the office. Approaching the other end of the office, Dr. Blank presses a button on the wall for the elevator and Enters, finding he is on the fourth floor of a building in fine, having an unusual number scheme. The keypad goes, goes from negative 150 to 150, including all floors. Before pressing a button, 
a floor by inductor or blank request as a wireless video transport under be moved to the elaborator and replaced with the construction cone to mark the entry point. A second and transporter unit is placed outside the elevator and control is instructed to recover the second unit and still test chamber should something happen to him. Then what in all is arranged he presses the button for floor 115. The descent down the elevator is long, consuming 15 minutes during, during this time. And the camera experiences one malfunction where the image darks and turns to snow. We're starting to show 14 other figures in the elevator with Dr. Blank as video pans around. All of whom as he, who move as he, he, he moves to allow his face. They remain for 35 seconds as the camera flickers to snow and returns. Dr. Blank is now alone in the elevator, dancing as is assumed by the ducks and sways of the video feed. Dr. Blank pauses to comment on the rising sedge coming from below. At this point, when the elevator has reached floor what, negative 108, Dr. Blank presses is uh, negative 110 to interrupt the descent down and exits when that floor is reached. The elevator door is open to an enclosed observation deck with several OPCs and chairs. All PCs appear to have, po have power. The ceiling is to his desk is also of glass, and above it, another desk is visible. Dr. Blank approaches the monitoring stations and checks. X1 to PC screens. On the screen is a faithful OHS logo and a video feed toggling between four different views. The first is a view. Uh, is a room of two similar to those found in Test Violet, which number in the thousands. The second view is, is a closer view of these tubes as camera glides and from each, each to monitor the contents. All tubes the camera passes by are broken. The third view is facing the opposite direction of, as the camera glides vertically, checking each observation station. A total of 10 can be Dr. and Dr. Blank as well as the camera passes by, by his own station. Looking up a hovering camera with no visible means of uh, propulsion glides uh, past him. The fourth view shows the ground floor below the observation deck where a single, astonishingly large torso being is crawling in circles, bumping into walls and changing direction. With the camera feed, the creature's estimated size is six stories. Returning in attention to the contents of the PC, Dr. Blank moves the video along a side to see a simple text editor that was hidden behind it. A printout of the sex was recovered and filed in the field kit. The printout directed Dr. Blank to a safe on floor 54 and provide a combination. Dr. Blank leaves the observation deck and proceeds to 54 without event. Arriving on the cubicle old office floor, he proceeds to the desk mentioned uh, in the document and finds a safe hidden and beneath a, a desk undisturbed. The combination provide it opens the safe and reveals a notebook. Filed in, in the field kit. And a peculiar uh, revolver that has been returned as blank blank. In addition to the 24 rounds of ammo found with it. Dr. Blank proceeds back to the, the elevator without question and returns to 34, giving the sheer number of floors available to explore and the vital information from the observation that this, a test is considered or, over and equipment is, re, is retrieved. Dr. Blank investigates the terminal nearby that has power and finds it shows the exact same screen as the one on the on on negative of 110 shows. It is arrives that the author of the note and saw the network virus to propagate it through the building so any PC on that network would be found and the information discovered. Dr. Blink returns to the entry point and we return to reflective if surface. All materials filed with other SCP-93 recovered materials. Analyze of Blank Blank and the ammunition for it first found for reason that would require the the construction and of one of the rounds that may be beneficial until the testing of SCP-93 is resolved. Video ends. The final test is classified as the red test.
<sighs> Mercifully, this test is also very short. SCP-93 distributed among, uh, among staff until a new color could be generated by contact with it. Service technician was blank was able to cause SCP-93 to take on a fierce red hue and glow, much brighter than the object's normal color. Blank agreed to assist with a test of SCP-93 for Dr. Blank's request. Blank blank given to technician blank for use in this test. When applied to the mirror for the test, SCP-93 generates an unknown environment. No color tinge appears present on the display destination, which is comprised of red stonework. Technician blank enters the mirror and video capture begins. Video flickers to life and set next to in blank, known hereafter as... Ah, frick. I refuse to call this person a subject, so... Tom. is viewing a large cylindrical of Hellard dash was hanging on its own. Object is of unknown height and appears to be 148 meters or 6 feet in width. Holes are distributed throughout the object at family random intervals. On occasion, a beam of white light is emitted through these holes. Turning up the camera finds that beams are connected to a multitude of objects similar to USB-93 that are part of the room's walls. The room turn turns out to also be cylindrical in shape with countless is copies of SCP-93. So it turns back to entry point and finds it is a section of the wall that is missing its copy of SCP-93, presumably the one carry a to its subject. Our sections of the wall on an inspection and are also found to be missing their copies. You can speculation that this may be some sort of central array. Subject finds a ladder in the floor while examining the room and proceeds down at it at control's request. The ladder erases into a large clean room of computer equipment that appears an antiquated compared to previous encountered equipment. Large computers running on 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 reel to reels are clicking and spinning at various locations. A light bulb of unknown un when he turns on for 10 seconds, it turns off. A large CRT monitor is displaying single words in eight colors at roughly five second in intervals. While observed, the words are clean, unclean, clean, clean, lost, unclean, flash on the screen. Proceeding through the room, it ends in a large glass window as another observation deck. This deck looks out over another series of tubes, as witnessed before, but far fewer and filled with a blue liquid. What appears to be electrical current dances over many of the tubes at erratic intervals. At least five tubes at first glance are empty and broken. At the observation window, a keyboard is present on a pedestal awaiting a selection to be made. The option is ends available on the screen are two status which waits for an, a numerical I import. Reports Situation X X549 Situation X550 Evacuation Log VS Agent Blank Report and Facility Fire Plan Video expunged all sections that generated a text were transcribed by subject and verified by a control member who passed through the portal to recover them. This process took approximately two hours and video feed was deleted to condense this report. Record, recorded documents are filed as blank, video interrupted. Control lost us contact with the object approximately 30 minutes after the departure of Control Tech. So I was asked to remain in the area and observe the machinery and the containment room to make, make observations for debriefing. The SCP-93 in the mirror portal returned to reflective surface prematurely and all video contact Equal subject was lost. Control was able, unable to reestablish due to USB 93 being across the mirror. A time lapse of 1 minute and 48 seconds was required before the mirror portal reestablished itself and shall return to the portal. So it appeared to be in good health and condition despite the time lost, but spoke little. During immediate debriefing, subjects underwent under convulsions and medical staff was alerted. 
while attempting to subdue the subject, he displayed enhanced strength and used blank to shoot one of the Dimitri Fink's staff, killing him. Guard shot subject once, once with a sidearm in the heart and once in the chest, but subject did not fall. All staff evacuated room, and a second shot was fired by sub, which missed. A more heavily armed team entered the briefing room and used automatic weapons to dispatch of subjects. Reports confirmed that subject did not bleed when shot, but instead leaked a green brown substance that seemed to be a mix of solution observed to in some containment tubes and material recovered during test 3. All further SCP-93 tests have been discontinued while review of materials recovered is in effect. A secondary tape recording device was found to have activated in its field kit after loss of video feed and its causes have been filled have been found with other uh, recovered materials. All recovered materials from SP-93 are testing our level 4 classification. Release must be approved by no fewer than and two level 4 or personnel. Staff with acceptable clearance, please sign in with Dr. Blank for access to the materials recovered from um, SCP-93 tests. Well, since we're cool, we're getting in early. So, SCP-93, Recovered Materials. Recovered Materials. All documents contained in this file are Class 4 clearance requiring two signed approvals to act access. Any employee reading past this point who does not have proper classification still considers themselves to be terminated from employment and now subject to disciplinary action and up to including forced administration of Class A amnestic, immediate transfer to cla air class security, and death. Fun. From the flu test, in news part for Article 1, only one item could be recovered during our, our initial test, and that was a, new for article, a newspaper clipping found attached to a corkboard in an abandoned bunker. Most of the articles were in a state of Okay, but this web one was firm enough to our recovery. Most Holy Father announces his progress. Unclean being cleansed. A rare public address directly from the Most Holy Father of the United Lands of the Sun has declared that the blessed militia has driven back many of the unclean who are skulking our lands now. New Rome, our capital, has been purged of the unclean, and citizens are encouraged to come back to their homes. Citizens who live in the surrounding countryside should not return to their farms, as the unclean still roam the fields and plains around our glorious city and continue to grow in size. The blessed militia has developed new weapons, which have proven capable of punishing the unclean and driving them back into the unfertile lands. Construction has begun a of a system to permanently close the infernal land and off from our blessed lands in each affected area, once all the unclean have been driven away. The most holy re requests that all citizens of our united lands bound prayer and other tits to recognize the sacrifice of our blessed militia in these troubled times. Reports have been coming in that I falsely accuse the blessed militia of having committed sin against citizens whose homes they are inhabiting as they travel bravely through contaminated lands. Well, actually, not really sin, but definitely against the law if the United States Constitution has anything to say about it, particularly the Bill of Rights. Anyway, right, let's continue. The Most Holy would like to remind the people that blasphemy against any who wear his mark is the most grave of sin, and unfounded accusations will be punished accordingly. We should work to support he and his men in however possible, just as they lay down their lives for us, the sinful rebels who... And the text ends there. Green Test. Newspaper Articles 2, 3, 4, and the Diary. Our second test recovered many materials that helped to establish a sequence of events for, for this alternate its world. The diary recovered provided glimpses to the last days of the owners of the home, from which it was recovered and may represent activity in other areas of the world as well. Newspaper Article 2 
Farms surround a city of several others have reported being unable to contact neighbors across voice and video feeds in last week until an approval is granted by the regional high father. An investigation cannot commence, but he assures the people that these events have not escaped his attention. Residents are advised to notify either local or less voice daily so any further disappearances can be addressed immediately. Residents are also advised to begin stocking their shelters to be ready for any situation. Newspaper Article 3 Following the disappearance of the blessed white races from several outlying regions around the city of Silver Flat, but others, the regional high father has declared a concern for safety and livelihood under this declaration all farmland residents must evacuate immediately to their shelters. Sky reports of an unclean and have come in but have yet to be verified. Newspaper Article 4 the City of Glorious Song has stopped responding to any and all communications. The worst can only be assumed, and our hearts go out to any who are in the region who are unable to hear our words. The City of Silver Feathers as Militia has reported several incursions by the unclean in into the city and have exterminated four of the abominations before they could become a danger to any residents. The regional high father reminds his citizens to avoid direct communication with the unclean. Eventual arms do nothing to the unclean. Only the most holy of implements will penetrate their skin. So do not put yourself in danger. Any citizens who suspect their neighbor is indulging in having sent and should immediately contact the blessed militia through designated checkpoints. <clears throat> Diary. All the dates are redacted. I'm assuming anyway. I have a distinct feeling we're, we're gonna die, so I'm gonna write this all down now uh, for whatever comes along and finds our, our bones. My name is Herbert Erdogan, and I'm a farmer. I grow the brab sticks and, and the huskers. We raise the ink, inks and the ooms. It's me, my wife, Arfia, and our two little ones, Strevin and Lysteria. I got this book and trade from the blood uh, as men who come and buy for food and, and shelter. He told us to start getting our shelter ready and not to let no other blood as who come when by I even though we're here. So that's the whole, whole thing and break down. Not and right no more. So I does as he said, God already. We gone down there in the next day or so in the morning. He he was gone. Which made his aid wife sad as he it was polite to, but as unlike most of the others. Figure he didn't want to be no bur murder. Liz went in out looking for him to be sure he wasn't just around the house. He didn't turn up nowhere, so I get as he left. So we guess he left. Strange enough, Liz found it, his clothes a mile or so away, and all his gear, but no him. She left it all there, uh, and that's for the best. If what happened, and I think, I'm clearly no educated man. Don't claim to be, but I can put two and two together. And tell you that things are bad out here, out there, for everyone, and especially for us, as as it's coming way too close. Sometimes you can smell it. That's when we hide. It smells like a leg of meat that's been and rotten for way too long, and just won't go back back into the dirt. Even the soil oil is rejecting him, I guess, refusing to let him be dirt buried to die. It came too fast. We weren't ready. The smell came in the night. Maybe we would have been. And fine, but little Owens were afraid, so we went to the shelter. Drive was slow. He saw it, kept staring at it as it shambled by. It ignored us until he screamed when I was getting lists as in the mist down in the shelter. I wanted to get him, but it was too fast. I saw him standing up there screaming. Then its head came down on him. Press over him. He tried to run for the stairs, try to get to us, but then in a blink, he was gone and it pulled away. His clothes fell into the cell, or like he vanished out of them. I got into the shelter, slammed the hatch, and locked it. I think it knows we're here now. They'll try to get in. Take us too. No tell oh, on how, how long we got. Plenty of food, though. I was wrong. The food was rotten. Something got into it, or I just didn't notice. We're eating what we can. There's food, but not enough. That thing ain't leaving. It, it's trying to find a way it's in. Smelt the smell coming from the your life w a plug in the wall. Something seeped through it, and we he kept away. We're all hard like a rock and don't smell no more. Maybe the power in the plug finally let it die. 
I went up to peek. Saw her spine. Dressed clothes on the stairs. Peeked outside. We're not going to make it. There were 10, 20, 30. Couldn't count so many. All going in a circle around the house. Looking at uh, with those faceless faces. And the stink. Oh, the stink. Went back into the shelter and locked the door. I think I don't want to see my family right away. I think faster is better. The mystery agrees. We won't tell Liz. She'll be first. Then my wife. My love. Then me. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. I gave the best life to my family possible. It was them. Holy ones were brought this. I was gonna append this as, as in memory to my great pa. He was old and knew stories older than himself. Says so it was unclean and, and they preached about. Those infernal zones we they say out, out of of all kinds of the most holy bring in the world together. Them things are the ultimate sin. Everything about all, all this that was evil and impure, it's them. They don't know nothing but doing what they do. Don't even know oh, why they do it. They just do it. Take us into them, then we're gone. I, I asked Paul of what they were, or he lit a stick, took a puff and said, don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody will admit it. But if you see this symbol, we see it. You run, boy. You run fast. You run far and you hide. You never go back where you saw it. That's all I know. I remember the symbol. It was on a uh, it was on a rock he kept about his neck on his, his shirt. Next day, Pop was gone. No one to be found. Dad weren't sad. Said he knew it'd happen one day. Pop up went home. See you soon, on Dad. Pop. Whew. That expunge. Simple match symbol found on on SP ninety three surface as one of the deeper engravings. Also match the symbol on those on the video feed, video final test on SCP-93 duplicates. Um, if I remember correctly from the document that I will be reading another time, not anytime soon though, um, those large creatures were created by uh, the by the submergent of of sinners in the Lord's tears. So the priests were the ones who were creating the biggest problems. Father Tess, Office Ledger. The third test with SCP-93 resulted in the unfortunate loss of a security member, but also allowed us to recover a ledger with insight into the medical procedures carried out on the alternate life form on the alternate Earth, now termed E-93. <sighs> Patient, Jennifer Armixerka, Recovery Tube 0011, Mixture, 35% and Tears, 30% and nutrient, 10% and HFT, whatever that means, and 25% blessing. Summary, Jennifer Amazorka is 20 cycles of age, and during her 18th cycle was a victim of a hover-eyed accident that resulted in brain damage and misalignment of her moral processes. She is prone to violent outbursts and can only be calmed down by impure simulation. Because of this, she actively seeks out strangles to mingle with and her patient and her parents have requested of Thai father that she be set in to the tears to mend her mind and body. Patient accepted. During preparation for or the tears, Sog went into rage and attempted to and it, in the attendant hand went to recover a sedative. Jennifer tore her clothes off and screamed impure words at me, so I locked the door and instructed the hand to wait outside. I am half shameful to admit that I laid it or Jennifer or, or a total of seven, seven times before putting her to the tears. It has been very long for me, and her parents have abandoned her to her ca our care. So care for her I will. Before sending her to the tears, I authorize the rest flow of her body, reflections, and found she is cell or now with young. And test confirm um, it shall be mine. I have mixed her back to accommodate this, and she will soak in the tears until her body is ready to give life. Hmm. Patient none. Recovery tube. 0012. Mixture, none. Summary, none. None. Patient, 
Alvarius Farafon, Recovery Tube, 0013. Mixture, A for centius, 20% nutrient. Summary, Alvarius Farafon is a farmer from outside the city of Silver Feathers who claims to have lost family to the unclean. He confronted high fathers of the e e e city and demanded compensation and re attribution for the loss. The high fathers denied the existence of unclean beyond the unfertile or land and refused compensation or retribution. Alvarez struck a high father and was arrested and said to a cleansing of the soul. Well, actually, the unclean are definitely a, the creation of the high fathers. Anyway. His mixture is primarily tears to seep into the soul and cleanse his heart and ease his pain. The lawkeeper said his family is indeed missing, so since beyond the tears, has been dropped in sympathy for their loss. I used the last of the HFT on Jennifer, so I would have been and used less tears in his bath. 80% is higher than I am comfortable with, but the HFT is becoming hard to, to obtain. I may have to go through the dark. Patient unknown. Recovery to um, 0021. Mixture 75 nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary A member of the blessed militia who was uh, wounded in combat. Request is from the High Father. Details withheld. Patient unknown. Recovery to 0022. Mixture, 75% nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary, a member of the blessed militia who was recruited a comrade. Request is from the High Father. Details unknown. Patient is also unknown. Recovery tube is 0023. Mixture, 75% nutrient, 25% blessing. Summary, a, num a member of the blessed militia who was Wounded in combat. Request is from the High Father. Details without. Guild to S. PC printout. Safe diary. Blank. The fourth test into E93 provides us with documentation assumed to be written by a technician at either a medical or recovery facility. Blank found under the safe is uh, considered. But for SV, SV classification, primarily to, to the composition of the ammunition found with it, and the advanced fire mechanism attached to what street would be a very base firearm. PC for ends out. I did not trust the Overwatchers. I felt something was wrong years ago. Under my desk on floor 54, there is a safe with a weapon in it. It is one of those used by the blessed militia. My brother has sent it to me. He says they are also not what they claim. They have done things to our fellows, even more vile than what the other clean would do. He tells me to be ready to fight. I cannot. It is not me. I do not know violence. I am too frail. You. Use it. Save yourself. Safe Diary. My name is Herval Otowes. I am a heart systems watcher here. My job is to monitor the sinful who bathe in the Lord's tears and make sure that they reach the prescribed dilution time. I have been doing this job for 23 years, and now things are falling apart. I can no longer abide by the Most Holy. I must speak the truth. We are being told to evacuate. The Katerian tubes have been breached. An unclean has appeared in the place of rest, and we are unable to destroy it. A live motion photo shows how it came to be, and this is what has unsealed my heart, my mind, and tongue. I must speak. Should the Overwatcher see this, I will be sentenced, so I must hide it. Thankfully, they are ignorant with the hardware I can and hide this easily. The Overwatchers told us we should leave last to ensure the hardware contains the unclean. What that means is we should distract it and die in case it breaches the watching desks. They have shared nearly all the tubes and absorbed the people in them. I have dispatched the eyes to the unclean and they have not uh, touched it. Bring me back a sample of it. The unclean are not sinners. They are not products of our disobedience. I suspect they are us. The eyes of the, the sample is older than myself, older than my eyes. Elders, it is over 200 cycles in age. 200! The sirens are still sounding. No, uh, no signal has come for us to leave. I do not think in, in this unclean is alone. I have seen how they, they can get into places. Be between places. Between... In places. Is that what they have been all this time? Between places? 
The makeup of the young clean inside the stable. Molecule was detached and reattached, almost before my eyes. As of the move, the entire thing reforms itself in time and space. Why does it not come up here? Too much effort? Or does it not sense me? They have no eyes, no mouth, no face. They cannot speak, cannot see, but they must be able to sense us. The smell, it is so strong. It comes from all directions. It is not ah, uh, the smell of the dead. It is a smell that comes from something that should be dead, but does not know how to die. The War of the Holy Union. I think that was where it may have started. We are united under the Most Holy, but what does he owe us? Nothing. We merely keep society running while those on high benefit. Is this how not how, how it has always been? But now we are told we are pleasing the will of those above us in the clouds. Those great beings who gave us power to live and prosper. Those who we have never laid eyes upon, but are told we must revere. Lies! All of it! It must be! I am using the eyes to create a fluid to oppose the makeup of the nuclear sample. Perhaps they will cancel each other out. I will leave soon and sort around here. I cannot use a weapon. I am too weak a man for this. I will protect my family with my mind and not with my rage. We will be safe in the fields. I know where to go. I will go above now to my family. I will leave the hydro running. I was told to turn it off, but this is where I defy them. It will run. This will rot. The eyes will see for however much time they have. Someone will read this, and someone will know. Take the gun. Take the fluid. Do not listen to the most holy. We did, and we are, are damned. Blake is a revolver style weapon with 12 wallet cylinders. The design of the gun has one cylinder on each side, raised slightly so they may flip the gun into the gun itself and then rotate, firing all rounds before flipping back out, not allowing it to be reloaded with the second. And while the second is useful, all allowing a total of 24 shots before it runs. It's empty. There is no firing pin on this gun, but instead there is a pullback slide mechanism that, that must be used to form the active cylinder. At this time of recovering, all 24 odds uh, contained in a syringe and uh, bullet with 32 needles on the end. On impact, it is assumed to force a shot. The force of shot will press liquid into the target, none have been tested. Our express interest is that these cylinders can now can hold standard 45 caliber ammunition, which has been tested. The gun uses an ultra high powered magnet and uses it to deliver the shot, so the gunpowder in the bullet is never used. In consideration is a redesign of a round that would utilize the gunpowder or made a flight to add even higher velocity to the round or that would explode on impact for higher yield. Red test, PC printouts. The final o authorized test with SP93 resulted in the loss of a skilled service technician but allowed us to recover very revealing documents that can only be assumed to have not been intended for public knowledge in, in, in any world. Curious among these, Agent Blank Report, which appears to have been written by a Foundation employee several of, uh, decades ago. While these paper printouts were the best material or, or recovered, it seems that a system used to create them allowed for multiple forms of input, including typed and verbal speech to text. Some audio logs of the printouts below are available, but must be requested in advance with fully written explanations as to why. This dual input system seems to explain the variances in style between users as well, with assumptions made on the part of the software while performing conversations. Faculty Fire Plan In the event of an, any emergency requiring the faculty to be evacuated, all clear force staff should report to train station 3 and use their file all to call on the evacuation train. Only one file is required to call the train and may a, contain any amount of tears. An empty file will not call the train. Clear 2 and 1 staff should remain at their post until either 10 minutes after the departure of Clear 4 first since or until authorized by Clear 4 staff. Clear 3 staff uh, should utilize the protective of garments at their station and the weapon lockers before proceeding to designated crisis areas as, as dictated by Clear 4 staff. Excuse me. Reports. Three unfortunate zones have increased 25% in size in the last seven days. Containment teams are not finding any presence of unclean in these, these zones, but are, highly, are, are visibly concerned as, as expanding. Clear five, I have high, a level 5 level or high 5 
I fathers have confirmed breaches in the holy chamber, or is that each of these zones? All chambers found empty, it is believed that the unclean have reached containment on the holy chambers. Dispatching additional guards are two remaining chambers. Situation X549 Expansion of zone on, on 64TO has been confirmed. Unfortunately, zone containment procedures in effect. Considering status to dispatch the site. This is a 10th report in 30 days. Upgrading to situation status. Reports from clear high, clear five high fathers have stopped at all. All affected. The city of his word has been placed on full lockdown and all traveled at night in or out. Other cities are now in alert mode and combat teams are in this fashion safe for perimeters. Situation X550. The great land of Hufushia has fallen for satellite images. Entire land as considered a tainted. Outbreak of sin reported in Levina, and that land mass has requested assistance from the Holy in Union. Assistance denied due to our own outbreak and mass reports of unclean. Clear tents that have issued the order or to evacuate via the gateway, and for all Holy and Union unauthorized and supersede to the nearest sky platform for evacuation to Star Eye Eden to continue monitoring status. Gateway keys are being ejected to prevent spread from the center to out their time space as vectors. Resurrecting step. And far being awake into monitor and continue reports here as we evacuate. May his blessings forgive our greatest sins. Evacuation Log Evacuation in progress. Shuttle 1 away. Shuttle 2 away. Shuttle 3. Error. 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 Release us. Release us. Release us! Why? 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 Shell 3. Error. Launch. Aborted. Proceed to Shell 4. Shell 4 reporting delayed launch. Overloaded. Try a, a troll call. Let's prepare. Engage. Shell 4 report. It's faster limit. Uh, 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 preparing to launch. Why? 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 Release us. Why us? Release us. Why? I ask what we did. And we do. Why? Why? Systems detecting electrostatic activity. Compensating. Compensating. Comp. 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 This is going to be hard to read. 1 why were we hurt? What did we do? Why were we hurt? What we do? System shut down. System resource. Person of contaminant that it in progress. Why us? Why us? Why us? Why us? Why us? Why us? Why? Listen. I'm so tired. Record. 5432-104-392. Password. Forgive us. 555-44. R four four three three two 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 one 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 one. Why 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 why? I'm not reading all this. System purge purge purr. Like a cat. B.S. What the frick is this place? Look, okay, so let me know. There are people typing stuff here, so I'm gonna type too. Well. So, like, I found this rock in the pond by the house, and it was all glowy and stuff when I picked it up, so... I'm like, oh wow, pretty when I picked it up, up, up the pond, you couldn't see the bottom, it was weird, with the glowy rock thing, I don't know, so I... Like, I guess I fell into it, oops, and now I'm here, and not there, and really I'm kind of scared, but this place is like a movie set, so it's cool. <laughs> There's some guy I can hear talking. He keeps asking me to come downstairs, but I don't, I don't see no door. He keeps screaming for help, too, because I told him to eat me. He left. He won't shut up. I guess I could try going back into that room, but it's so creepy in there. I'm sort of scared er, er, to laugh. Oh, hey, I found a door. It's like, again, the floor so, uh, on the wall. So, like, I'm going to go tell that guy yelling to shut up so I can go home.
Bye bye. Agent Blank report. My name is Blank, and I am an agent at the Foundation. The year in my world is 1972. I assume it is the same in this world, but from what I have seen due to SV-93, life in this world uh, ended in approximately 1954. I have used SV-93 to visit a number of locales, starting and ending here, here in the center. I have seen the landscapes where no grass will, will grow. I have run from the unclean, as they pursue anything they sense. I have no understanding of how they hunt, but I have learned what they are. Approximately 350 years or so, this world experienced an ecological boom. Ours did not. The source of this seems to have been the arrival of He, a godlike being of unknown origin. He declared the world unclean and full of sin, and the only way to purge itself of this sin was to purge the sinners. A war. Whoever was left alive was clean. Amazing advances in science were restored to all cultures for a period of ten years to prepare them for this war. And during that time, he disappeared. The war happened anyway. The instigator, the holy land of Union, and apparently the landmass that for us would become the United States. Records are sketchy and books that tell anything about this time period are forbidden in the world. I located a catch of recorded history by following a series of corrupted, commu of corrupted computer communications. <sighs> it seems the primary weapon used in this war for his love was in fact people, exposed to something called his holy tears, a liquid compound I have seen and used even today in, be in medical facilities. His holy tears were to sin from the clean make, make them love him. At least that's what the label states. The records I recovered are very unclear about how this war was raged, except to state his holy chosen walked the lands of the sinful and looked their sin unto themselves. Those who cried for his salvation received it and are now our children. Those who denied his love were purified in his radiance. But something apparently happened no one knew how to deal with. The unclean, the large creatures that are half a man and devour whatever they touch that lives and breathes. I actually found a scientific report reported by someone who saw someone here with a 90, with a, a, an SCP-93 copy. These creatures are the result of exposure to a very pure form of his tears resulting in a genetic apocalypse occurring within the exposed. There are terms in here something about quantum restructuring. I don't understand any of this, but it means they were once humans like everyone else. They, they, they couldn't be controlled, but they could be contained. They seemed to be attracted to his tears, and a central point was established in various regions, where a person and with the purest form of his tears stays, keeping the unclean in that area known as an unfertile land. Something went wrong with that too, not sure what, but uh, everything fell apart. The power structure, the culture, the people. All of it fell to ruins, and now those things shamble around the land and as its new owners, with no purpose or direction. You can stand next to one of you who, who can stand the stink, and they slip, and they just slip uh, past you. If you catch their attention, though, that's it. They, they move like lightning if they, they need to, and like a snail unless they have a reason to speed up. Sometimes I think they just I think they chase us to do it. Others they move to kill. I think someone in this facility. Or some ones, I keep hearing voices and press coming from under from areas under the floors. I want to leave this before I, I explore the facility any further. I have sent SCP-93 back through the entry in mirrors to seal that gate. These things can't be let into our world, nor should we have anything to do with this one. We're simply not smart enough to understand and at, at all, I feel. I don't think the unclean can die. They're immortal, but they don't want to be. They just want to die. An error in my head, I think. I didn't notice it until just now, but the women in this room were deciding to react to me, words on the screen, begging for help. I remember touching the tears, smelling it, tasting it, just touch. Not eating it, just touching to it, tasting for acidity. We have pretty stupid investigation uh, procedure, I think. <laughs> the High Fathers are alive. They have technology we only imagine our comics given by him. Some of the records on this machine indicate space travel. But they didn't go far, just far enough to watch the world fall apart and wait it to come back to take it. But they're up there. Who is in this building with me? 
I've seen the faces of the people, the unclean. They show up on the pictures cast by the machine in the room with me, watching me. I think they're everywhere on this world, only seen by machines now. They don't look sad or happy, just curious. They want to know why. Why them? Why did it all happen? I don't know. I just don't know. They show me things when I touch them, and it's not quite like, like the records say. The unclean remember it all. Every person they touch becomes part of them, safe inside them, but dead to us. Every mind, every feeling, every terror, it's eternal to them. I kind of want to join them, but too much to do. They want me to find him, kill him. There was no war. It was him. Him. It. It came from between the folds of time I and mean, space and worlds and light and dark. It's something that it is but should not be slipped in and caught out to them as their god. And they believed it. They tasted it and touched it. And, and, and laid with it and became its property. And its will. It is still here. The SP-93. It brought with it. Pulled forcibly with it. It built it. I don't know. Oh, they, I don't know, but it belongs to him. It lets him move between places, between worlds. So I broke it. <laughs> I threw pieces of it away and through holes. So those doors are just close. Just like ours is close. And I can't go home. So what else can I do? It calls out through the rock. Somehow, oh, it knows where they are, but can't touch them. But if you hide the rock, he can't call out. And he's stuck too. I got you, you son of a frick. I got you. Bang, bang. Haha. <laughs> I... Touched him with my fist and my gun, and he fell down. But I'll get back up soon. I'm sorry, I, I did all I can. Let me sleep now. Please, let me sleep. That was SCP-93. A very interesting anomaly and definitely deserving and requiring of its own video due to the length of it. I'll see you next time with SCP-94 and 95. Goodbye. Oh yeah, please like the video, um, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. Now goodbye for real.